YouTubers, what we are going to do today is we are going to use the foil quill to um, foil quill onto some tissue paper. And then we're going to transfer that tissue paper onto these wax candles. This is a great, fun, personalizable project that's pretty quick to do. I will show you all my tips and tricks. And let me go show you what you need. All right, so you're going to need a wax candle. Um, some of these are from Amazon. Some of these are from Hobby Lobby. Um, but they just need to be a wax candle. Hobby Lobby does put them on sale as part of their rotating weekly sales. Um, so if you want to get like a set of three different sizes that match, Hobby Lobby might be your better bet for that. Um, the white ones, if you are an absolute perfectionist or this is the first time you've ever done this, highly recommend these white candles. They just seem to take this technique better and hide everything. Um, you're more likely to see issues in the black candles. Um, if you really want to, but we're doing Halloween candles, so we're doing the black ones. But you can do this on any color candle as long as they are wax. And the trick to make this work is you need matching tissue paper to go with your candle. So white, red, black, it doesn't really matter. If you can spring for some nicer, thicky, thicker tissue paper, it will make your life easier. Um, when you make your designs or when you... So this is... Um, I already did the silver... Um, be prepared for them to tear or not turn out. So just do extra, long story short. These I cut out, so there's nothing wrong. But just prepare to do extra in case the tissue paper does tear, because it is tissue paper. But this blacker tissue paper I got from Amazon, it's a little thicker, so it is nicer. Um, and also, really sketchy designs um, are might be more problematic on this with this technique than just an, a single outline or a couple outlines. So keep that in mind when you're picking your design for a candle. We're also going to need um, a heat gun. This is the heat gun for paper embossing or the embossing powders. The reason why I picked this one out is because you need to melt your candle but you can't melt it too much. So um, if you do have the bigger embossing gun, turn the heat down to low. So because you can't melt them too much because then it becomes mess. Ask me how I know. Um, and then wax paper for this and then we're using um we're using the cameo 2 today and this is the foil quill this is the medium tip you can do this in any of the cameos one two three or four um we are using the a adapter a adapter goes for one two and three if you have a four it is the um d adapter but this works in any of them and then you're going to need foil um this is Spellbinders foil. It's a little bit cheaper than the um, We Are Memory Keepers foil, but it needs to be heat reactive foil. It can't be the toner reactive foil. But we're gonna do. I already did. Um, so I already did some silver, and then I did purple too. So then we're gonna make an orange one. And what I found is you can cut them out. So what we're gonna do is just a bunch in different sizes and um, colors. So then you can fill in your candles however you want to. So we're going to do some orange ones. All right. So actually we're going to set this up on our little piece of paper quick. This is the triumphant return of the well-loved mat. This mat has been in more videos than I can even tell you. Um, to get this to work, you need a ridiculously old well-loved mat that is not sticky anymore. You obviously cannot put tissue paper on a brand new mat and expect it to come off. So this is the ridiculously well-loved mat. Don't ever throw away your mats. You never know when you might need them. Um, but this one's been in quite a number of videos. I really like it for everything paper. So, and this is my tissue paper. This is from Amazon. And I really do like that it's a little bit thicker because um, it makes life a little bit easier. And you're just going to stick it. This is about five inches wide. So... I'm doing it, so we're going to line it up between 1 and 7, and then that will give us at least 5 inches wide here, and then just rub it down, and then I just cut off the extra, All right. and then you're going to take your, your, this is orange we're doing, so our design's going to be... Our design is going to be between one and six, so that's where we know to line it up in the software, um, so that we can uh, 
make sure we actually foil quilt on the foil. Um, as always, it will not foil quilt over tape. All right, so this is washi tape. It doesn't have to be like the tightest stuff on the planet, but you do want to make sure that they can't, um, the foil quilt can't grab it and um, pull it. So it doesn't have to be like wrinkle free, but it does just need to be where the, the foil quilt can't grab it. I'm a taper. You may not need all of this tape, but I'd rather tape it than risk having it screw up. Alrighty, so we got it all set up on our mat. We're going to take our foil quilt and now we're going to go set up in the software. Alright, so this is the Halloween little sketch file that we are doing today. It's on the webpage. I'll leave a link down below. But they are all single line sketch files. Um, so they're great for this. Um, I've already got it set up in the software, but I did want to show you real quick. So a sketch file is a single line design. Um, a lot of people, when they use the pens and the markers and stuff, this is Arial right here, and they get the outline look that they don't like. So that's what a sketch file is. Um, is it just a single line? So it looks like it's drawn. Um, so we'll delete this guy. Also, something else I wanted to show you real quick. Um, these guys, um, if you bring them in and they're a weird color, and you go over here to the line fill color, they won't change. Um, it might. It's trying to. It's trying to change the fill here. But what it is, is you need to go to line color. And that's how you really get them to change colors. So that you can see them. So if you're, you're sitting here trying to get it to be a different color and want to see what it's going to be like, it's going to be the line fill color. So like we set it up before, our design is between one and so I remember our, our paper was five inches, our foil is five inches wide. So I set it up between one and six. We're gonna move it over, skosh. And then I like to keep it between one and 12 down here because it will not foil on the tape, even though I do it all of the time. Also, um, I wanted to show you this real quick. This is, it's the transparency here. So if you bring it down to 100%, that's when you can see the mat with the numbers on it. So, but I've just, I brought them all in here and made them different sizes and shapes so that we'll have a, a variety to pick from and play with. And so we're gonna hit send. And this is already set up. So cardstock plain. And then we're going to, with the sketch feature. And then you're gonna use a pen because that's your only option. And then um, you can select them all and we're gonna sketch if they haven't lit, if they didn't light up all at once. And obviously, the more you sketch and the more sketch lines you have, the longer um, your it's going to take for this to process. So keep that in mind. Now, what I have been doing is taking those four or the speed down to one, um, just to make sure nothing tears. And I've been leaving the four seven. And then we're just going to do one pass. Now, this will take a couple minutes because it's a lot. The more you sketch, the longer it's going to take. So, and I've had my foil quilt plugged in and warmed up. Um, make sure that it is plugged into, it's, it's a USB port at the end, so make sure it's plugged into some kind of USB adapter. Also, um, don't let it sit in your machine while it warms up. It needs to be, like I've left it laying on my desk, but don't put it in your machine and warm it up and leave it running for a long time. It's not the best for your machine. All right, so I'm gonna take my little foil quilt and put it in. Take my mat and put it in. And it's gonna slowly, slowly draw. Alrighty, so there is our foil quilt all done. You see where it sits. And then, depending on how you have this taped up, sometimes it's easier to take it off the foil off and then the tissue paper off or sometimes it all just comes off at once. I've done a lot of quilling in my life. I've never seen that. The foil quill, the foil stuck. It'll come off, but it's kind of interesting. And here. All right. So to get this tissue paper off, flip it 
and be careful. All right, so what you wanna do now with your little um, foil quill designs is you're just gonna to wanna to cut them out. Now it doesn't have to be like super duper close by any means, um, but you just need to cut them out. And then cut out however many you want for your candle. Alrighty, so that is my candle. I have taken it off, uh, taken off the wrapping. And then I have found that if you do a bunch of like little ones, instead of one big one, it seems to look better. So we're gonna do this got candy first. And then we're gonna put little designs around it. So you just hold it onto your tissue paper. And then this is wax paper. And you're gonna wanna hold it fairly tight. So that is our foil quill design under there. This is wax paper. Um, we're going to heat this up with our heat gun and the first one's going to take a minute because the candle's cold. Uh, but once it gets heated, it'll go pretty quick if you want to do more of them. Um, also, move all of these so your heat gun doesn't blow them everywhere. Um, so what's going to happen is the candle's going to melt a little bit so it'll get darker. So right now it's kind of white. It'll get darker. Now you want to make sure that it melt but it can't be like dripping out of the bottom of your candle because then that's too much and you're just going to end up losing your design and it's going to get covered in wax so a little melt but not too much melt also don't burn your fingers so that's what i'm talking about see the melt and let it cool for a second and then you can peel it back and so there you go candy. The other thing I like to do is make sure that it's melted from top to bottom, especially on these black candles, because it hides anything that's really shiny and obviously not part of the original candle. Now this is melted wax. You're going to make sure that it doesn't go back over where you've already just done because it'll deposit wax back onto your, onto your design. But basically I'm just going to work my way around adding um, a little bitty, or some candy. Adding my my little designs as I go, and that's what I meant. You didn't want to do that. See the leak up there? You don't want to do that. <laughs> it's not hard. And see how that one went a lot quicker than my first one. All right, so that is our finished candle. And I just kind of put, and these actually are on top of each other. They actually worked. These are so much fun. And this is another one, right? And candy and then pumpkin. But what I mean is like, see a lot of this, it just kind of looks a little bit rough and looks like you've kind of, you know, done something to the candle. Where this white one, you can't tell for anything in the world. So keep that in mind, but from far away, it looks really cool and you got a Halloween candle. Come on. I have a ghost wearing a witch hat. Come on. So I think this would be great for Christmas. This would be great. I don't know what to get you. Here's a candle present. Um, so for Christmas, um, Thanksgiving holidays, tablescapes, you can personalize the bejesus out of this, monogram these bad boys on up. They'd be great gifts, great decorations. So I'm a big fan of anything you can, you know, make personalized. So, I hope you liked our little video. Please like and subscribe, and we'll be back with another video soon. Thank you so much for watching.